Still going strong and celebrating our 25th season. This is Friday Night Sports Extra, brought to you by Subway and Sterling Savings Bank. You waited all week and it's finally time. Sit back and relax, put the ball on your mind. Punch one in from the five-yard line. Team for the top plays, then hit rewind. Bring on your cane, grab your umbrella. Varsity sports, they work hard for a letter. KXLY, no one covers better. You are now tuned to the Friday Night Sports Extra. All right, welcome to week seven of the Friday Night Sports Extra here on KXY 4HD. I'm Derek Dice. And I'm Ben Cap. And we got big games from all over the region. And we sent Dennis all the way down to Lewiston <laughs> for our game of the night. Sorry, Dennis. Yeah, he wasn't Long even drive. mad. More on that in a minute. <laughs> but first, let's send it over to Keith Oso in Stadium 4 with this week's special guest. You know, not a good week to forget your coat when you're driving somewhere along the way. I can tell you that from experience, but I did get helped out. We'll have more on that later. Plenty warm in here, though, because the Lakeland Hawks are here, and they've been warming up. Get out of here, Lakeland Hawks. There we go. <laughs> yeah, all the way from Rapton tonight. We'll get to their game coming up a little bit later. North Idaho games coming up first tonight because there's a huge game down in Lewiston. Dennis Patchen rigged up, gassed up the rig, and headed down south. Dennis. Boy, Keith would be lucky to be alive after that start, huh? Welcome to the show, and thank you. Coeur d'Alene at 5-1 starting league play at Lewiston, who's already got one loss. Can ill afford another loss homecoming for the Bengals if they lose their playoff hopes in serious jeopardy. Vikings get the ball first. First play from scrimmage, Zach Kieser with it on, on the handoff, off to the races. 56 yards down the far sideline before Daniel Matten uh, saves the touchdown there, but only for a couple of plays because out of the old single wing formation, Kaiser with a direct snap, 6-0 Vikings, they missed the extra point. Vikings inside the 10 looking for more, but on a fourth and one, quarterback Chad Challenge can't handle the snap. Bengals recover. Alexander Lee with a turnover there. Both teams added field goals for 9-3 leads. Carlos Martinez with a block punt and recovers it inside the 15. But that drive would stall, and the Bengals return the favor, blocking the field goal try. Connor Emmel with a big play there. Right before the half, it looked like the Bengals were going to take the lead. First and goal inside the five. Lewiston quarterback Bo Kearns. Oh, no! He's picked off by Keegan Dunn. Down the sidelines he goes. The big return. The Vikings led it 9-3 at the half, but went on to win it 44-3. They got their offense rolling in the second half. Ben, Derek? All right, thanks a lot, Dennis. Staying in the Inland Empire League, the Lake City Timberwolves are trying to keep pace with their crosstown rivals as they host a team from my old league, the Wenatchee Panthers. It's scoreless in the first quarter before the home team finally gets it going. And even Van Troxel is using the Wildcat formation these days. Caleb Mitchell keeps it himself. And da 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 He's going for distance. He's going for speed. Long touchdown, 7-0 still in the first. LC at it again, and Ben could have scored on this play. Mitchell just walks into the end zone to put the home team up by 14. <laughs> the Panthers get on the board in the second. Nolan Johnston punches it in from the one. Final score in this one, Lake City 46, Wenatchee 18, T-Wolves are 5-2. All right, so Timberline made the trip up to Post Falls, and it was not good for them. Post Falls up 42-0 in the second quarter. Timberlines, Cooper Harris gets smacked by linebacker Cody Siegel. And you just kind of say we're up 42 nothing. What else can you say? Timberline struggles continued. Whoa. They tried to reverse, but it ends up on the ground. That's not good. Post Falls comes up with the ball. The very next play, Matt Lickford pump fakes, and that's a pretty throw to Jordan Pastras for the touchdown. 49 nothing at that point. Post Falls, they win it 56 to 6. They're mugging for the camera in Rathdrum as Lakeland played host to Sandpoint. The Eagles scored on their opening drive. Car Troy, thank you very much. In the handoff rolls left and finds Corey Thorne. It's 6-0 after the missed extra. Back comes Sandpoint. Former Shining Star Brandon Hawkins passes to Eric McSarian. He's passing to Joe Duarte. It's a touchdown, right? But hold on. Something smells. They say it's <laughs> two forward passes. Why'd you do that? So the touchdown gets called back. Later on the drive, Luther Morgan runs it in from a couple yards out. Sandpoint runs away with it, 41 to 21. Got another score for you to pass it along. Moscow, uh, big winners, 56-26 over Timberlake. You forgot your coat? I forgot my coat. I was halfway to wash Tuckna and realized it's really cold and I don't have a coat. But when I was at Ritzville, Cameron Key's mom 
drove home at halftime and brought me a coat and gloves. So Ritzville, my new favorite place you, to go. You so owe, you owe. That's it's, awesome. It's but uh, yeah, I owe her big time. But uh, in the GSL tonight, Ferris coming off a huge win last week, looking to keep things going. But Meade had other plans on homecoming today. They get they strike first. Andy Wetzel, this little swing pass out to Wes Bailey, and there's nobody there. Check this out. Right up the gut, and he's giggity giggity gone. 78 yards. Meade looking for the upset, up seven to nothing early. Meade defense came to play. Big good win of Ferris. Had four touchdowns last week. He's looking to pass, but it's a trap. He's picked off by Paul Miller. Intercepted, and there he goes. 14 to nothing, Meade. And Panthers weren't done in the first half. Wetzel goes deep, finds PJ Hahn in the end zone, and that's 20 to nothing at the half. But kids, you gotta score when the cameras are there, or feel you gotta stay a little bit longer. 21 to 20. Meade comes back and wins it in the second half. At Gonzaga Prep, Halloween coming a little earlier. I certainly hope it is coming early. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bishop Shanky, Sankey Show. Well, look at this. On the bounce, the punt return, up the right sideline, get some blocking, and the Indians are not going to haul this young man down. He's, oh! Oh! Let me say that again. Oh! Touchdown, Sankey. Now the Wildcat formation, the direct snap. He dives into the end zone. 13-0 Gonzaga Prep. Thank you, Bishop. May we have another? Look at that. He spins away from three defenders. 20-0 lead. Prep rolls behind number nine, 48-7. Ooh, someone said there was a jungle cat in the bathroom. And here comes the opening kickoff. Tyler Green of Mount Spokane. This is how you start a game off. 95 yards. Mount Spokane is looking really good this year. Into the end zone, 7 to nothing before you can even blink out of Joe Abbey Stadium. More Mount Spokane. They hand off to Chase Nacarado. That guy is a tough football player. Into the end zone, 14 to nothing, and they continue to go. Carson uh, Blumenthal finds Dan Moore. More points for Mount Spokane. Breaks the tackle. Get off me. You get off me, too. Into the end zone. Mount Spokane cruises in this one, 34 to 14. At CV. It was 42-7 Bears at a half, and CV opens the third with this Austin Rico field goal. Uncle Rico in the first team offense. Done for the night. The Highlanders trying to get something going, but Drew before gets brought down before he could get out of the pocket. Kevin Stanley with the sack. CV second team looking to punch one in, but the snap gets away from Garrett Sawyer. Luke Miller scoops it up and gets a big return, but Shea remains winless as CV wins big, 45 to seven. Last night, UHI's Jory Zettel ran for over 200 yards and three touchdowns against Rogers, but check out there until it on the quarterback sneak spin cycle. Around the linebacker, he's gone 56 yards. That brings the Pirates within seven, but U High would answer right back. Connor Johnson fakes the handoff, finds Colin Young wide open for an 18 yard score. The Titans take this one 35 19. They're now three and four. Pirates still in search for that first win. All right, we didn't bring that Lakeland band in here for nothing. So let's send it in the stadium four with Keith and Dennis have more with the Hawks. I love this time of year because you can start to see which teams are positioning themselves for playoffs and teams like my Mighty Knights that are do or die at this point in the season. If they're as good as the Lakeland Band is tonight, and they've been good, we've been hearing them before, I'll tell you what, we Great Northern League coming up. you got to be good to get in the playoffs there. We'll tell you about that when we return. Friday Night Sports Extra. Lakeland High School Band live in Stadium 4 here at KXOY 4. Welcome back to the Friday Night Sports Action. Great Northern League action now, Ben. That's right. We start off with Keith Oates' alma mater, East Valley hosting Cheney. Homecoming there, the best dressed guy out there. He's got the girl too. Best player was the Knights, Adam Towley, making Keith Oso proud. Had 281 Whoa. yards rushing and two touchdowns. Then with his team ahead, 21 nothing, takes a second half kickoff. That's 84 yards. Fighting Keith Oso's lead at 27 to nothing. The defense looked pretty good as well. Cheney quarterback Ben Bissell's pass gets picked by East Valley's quarterback Dustin Hansen. The Blackhawks though would get on the board in the fourth quarter. DeAndre Moore Young, the three yard touchdown run, but not nearly enough. Keith with a big smile on his face, I'm sure. They win it 27 to six. Couple other scores for you. Deer Park doubling up West Valley. Up north of here, Deer Park Stags. That's right. That's the favorite. And Pullman, 21-18 winners over Clarkston. 
All right, to the Northeast A-League now, and we strongly considered Colville at Freeman yeah. for our game of the night. The Indians came in with the perfect 6-0 record, while the lovable Scotties were 4-2 and <laughs> and thinking upset on their home field. We pick it up, tied at 6 late in the first quarter. Sophomore QB Wyatt Smith fires a strike to Cameron Duckett for a 17-yard touchdown, two-point conversion. 14-6, dogs. Colville facing a fourth and nine. Sawyer Bardwell going for all the, all the marbles, but he gets picked off in the end zone by Isaac Dioria, and the D apparently stands for defense. But the Indians get even just before the half. Bardwell scores in the sneak, and Colville goes on to score 26 unanswered in the second half, including two defensive touchdowns for a 40-18 victory. All right, another Northeast A-League action. Lakeside over Tuila on a game-winning safety Eight to six in that one. It was Riverside Rams all over St. Mary's 59 to seven up in Chatteroy. And Newport Grizzlies, big winners over the Liberty Lancers, 45 to 19. Dennis. Two games uh, crossing over, one Idaho Washington, and it was all Priest River beating Kellogg in that one as the Idaho schools hooked up. And the other non league score, it was Montana's Libby Loggers coming in losing at Bonners Ferry. Keith. Hey, Lakeland Hawks band here entertaining us all night long. We got the bass player here. Is that hard to play if you guys go marching down Sherman, you go wherever you go in Rathrum down Main Street, and you got to get a really long extension cord? Uh, it can't be difficult. I, I have a wireless system for that I use for stuff like that. How much do you have to be really cool to be a bass player? I've heard that. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. I'm sure his parents agree. Now, speaking of cool, we got some hair down here. I mean, a uh, drummer yeah. down here. Uh, talk about these sticks here. How long did it take to get those ready to go? Uh, too long. Too long. Yeah. Well, then you don't break them because then you got to do that to more sticks. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pain. Yeah. I bet it. I bet it is. Can you, you guys gonna keep entertaining us tonight? Oh yeah, all the time. You can give us a drum roll later when we call on it. Sure. How about right now? Not bad, not bad. Hey, the Colfax Bulldogs are one of the best teams in the state. We're going to get to those guys coming up next on Friday Night Sports Extra. Lakeland Hawks, take us away! This is Friday Night Sports Extra, brought to you by Subway and Sterling Savings Bank. That drummer does look a little different than before the break. All right, welcome back here to the Friday Night Sports Section here on KXY 4 HD. I was in Lakeland tonight, and the Hawks band, they're not just rocking at the studio. They were definitely rocking out there when it was freezing <laughs> cold. They were having a good time all night long. We're going to send it back to Stadium 4. And Keith and Dennis and the band. Well, welcome back. Don't drop that ball. We'll have to jump on it. Not only are they good, they're loud. They're I don't know loud. if you can hear that at home. They're and, loud. And very good. And you know who else is good? Who? Colfax. They're really good. Yeah, they Taking are. on a, only one loss, Lynn Ritzville team. Kind of a first place showdown. Ritzville trying to figure out how to stop those Colfax Bulldogs deep in their own territory. But there's Tyler McNann and breaks the tackle. 25 yard gain. Nice shoestring tackle to save the touchdown. That sets up Alex Teedy. Isn't he like a sophomore in college by now? A little huck it, chuck it football down to Kellen Morgan in coverage. Nice catch for the guy down to the 10 yard line. Looking to score right before the half. Looking to punch it in, but here comes Traven Smith. Gets the quarterback sack for the Broncos. That holds Colfax to a field goal. Only 25 to nothing at the half. Second half into the dark area. There was a, a bank of lights out, so we're going to go turn the lights off and into the end zone. TD to Morgan. Bulldogs win it again, 32 to 9. Man, they're impressive. Still ranked number one in the state. Also today, big rivalry game. Reardon with a big win at home against their rivals Davenport. Also Springdale coming up with a lot of wins this year, 14 to seven on the road. Other scores in the Southeast 2B, it was Waitsburg Prescott improving to seven and oh, they beat Tri-City Prep. Also a Soton with just an, an awful game. They turned it over 10 times in yeah, that game. Yeah, it's not gonna win a lot. The Irish money. with a win and Tico Oaksdale and Rosalia coming up with the big victory over Dayton. Now we saw a lot of points scored here. Usually we don't have that till we go into eight man football but not a lot of points scored in eight-man football tonight. A little bit backwards. Well, they're playing some defense in Washington, an eight-man game. Look at the great lights and the great shot there. Tico Oakstay, or Lackwash against Tushi. Another Ani at Lackwash. This one's Jake Ani. Gets it out to Sawyer Hostetler. Number 66 scored a touchdown. <laughs> Eight-nothing Tiger Cats. Tushi would answer. Jake Hoddenfeld to Eric Hines. Cuts it up and gets it in. But Lackwash would get more. There's 66 again. And look, there's 66 again. He's a skinny guy with a fat guy number. That's a fat guy touchdown. I don't care how thin he is. 
Don't worry, moms. Fat guy touchdowns are good. good up the sidelines, actually got it to the one. Set up a touchdown. They go on for the victory tonight. There you see it by 20. More score, St. John Endicott, 74. That's an eight-man score. That's what you're there supposed you to do. They get the win at home. Also, Liberty Christian with a four-point win at Colton. Close game down there at Colton. And the Garpet, look at that score. Are you kidding? You're on probation, 16 to 12 in an eight-man game. You got to do better than that. Wow. Cusick, the top-ranked 1B team in the state. They beat Republic 59-0. Curlew and Selkirk, it was the Rangers over the Cougars by 20. Welping it at Northport. Hey, Northport improving, just a four-point loss. Remember, this is their first yep. football season in some time. And Wilbur Crescent, a two-point win over Odessa Harrington. That's a big win for WC. And Kootenai and Lakeside. Right now, Lakeside, 30-point winners over the Warriors. We've got Mullen and Clark for it. The Wampus Cats, Wampus Cats. One of the favorite mascots around here. Big winners. Troy, 50 to nothing over Clearwater. The Rams not packing much power. Then we've got Genesee. 32, 24 winners over Deary. Don't go away. We've got your plays of the night coming yeah. up right after the break. But first, more from the Lakeland Band here on the Friday Night Sports Extra. Everybody, a little robot, a little robot. I'm, I'm the only guy robot. alive when that song came I out. I wanted in the to, studio. I wanted to cut off the band. I never get to do that. So, uh, but you know what time it is? Time for plays of the night. All right, we go to Thursday night. Rogers, how about Theron oh. Tillett? Look at this run right up the heart of the defense here. 56 yards. Well, the Rogers Pirates couldn't get, look, oh, look at that spin move. Spinorama, nice. baby. Yeah, play number two of the night. We take you back out to Gonzaga Prep. Bishop Sankey, he makes it every night. We're gonna speed up, speed up, speed up. But check this out. The block is what makes it the play of the night. You gotta keep your head on a swivel when you're in a vicious cockfight. Nice touchdown for Bishop Sankey. Play number two. Wow. All right, play number one could have been Keith's robot that he just did instead. We give it to an East Valley night, just like Keith was. That's Adam Talley, a heck of a homecoming, had 280 some odd yards rushing. This 84 yard kickoff return, three touchdowns. Knights win big over GNL rival Chain. 